Y ya vamos a otra vez. Hello everyone. Welcome to our first uh, uh, first uh, in a serious uh, discussion about Brexit and uh, and uh, Brexit. What next? Actually, um, uh, we have uh, 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 three uh, uh, European guests uh, um, uh, joining me today uh, uh, from uh, UK, Poland, and. Uh, uh, and uh, in Berlin, we have half an hour to discuss uh, how uh, the international collaboration might look like uh, 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 after Brexit. Just wanted to give uh, our guests a few seconds to introduce themselves and uh, organization you represent, and then uh, we can start chatting. Who wants to? Start? Agata, do you want to start? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Agata Lisek. I'm professor of migration studies at Bard College Berlin. Um, and I also collaborate with Alicia uh, within the context of Centrala Berlin. Thank you. Piotr? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr Michalowski, and I'm a coordinator uh, at the European uh, Network of Cultural Centers. Our website is uh, encc.eu, but this EU doesn't mean that we are only focusing on European Union. We are very broad oriented. Great, and Simina? Uh, yeah, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Simina Nagu. Um, I'm a cultural worker uh, and writer, and I am uh, working as program and operations coordinator at INEVA, otherwise known as Institute of International Visual Arts in London. Right, thank you. Um, okay, so let's just jump in. What next? Uh, what, uh, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you start thinking about post-Brexit Europe and, uh, and collaboration? I know everyone's got different fears and uh, assumptions. There is still very little we know in practical terms, but what, what do you feel the, the, the Brexit will change? Just jump in. Okay, so I'll start because earlier today I was actually working on a joint application for, for a research grant with colleagues from um, a UK-based university, and it's a funding line organized. Um, it's, they started a few years ago. It's a collaboration between the uh, AHRC, so the Arts and Humanities Research, research Council in the UK, and the, the German Research Council, the DFG. Uh, and as I was working on this application, I thought, well, for me right now, nothing has changed mm -hmm. <laughs> personally, right? Because like I continue working with my wonderful colleagues and, and also within the context of another uh, organization that, uh, that I'm part of, which is the Open Society University Network, uh, Bart College Berlin, where I teach, has a collaboration possibility with Birkbeck and with uh, SOAS in London. Uh, and as I was thinking about this, this topic, what next, I thought that I think that the most spectacular changes and those that we cannot really foresee right now are those that will be affecting, in this case, in the, the field in which I work, scholars who do not have those networks yet. So it will be more difficult for people on both sides, on the UK side and on the EU side to establish those connections. So as someone who's already worked with numerous UK based organizations, both academic and cultural, I feel like I can build on those relationships and move on. But I really worry about the state of those collaborations in the years to come, especially for early career uh, researchers um, and, and artists. So younger people or people who starting new careers, they will have def definitely have a more difficult start and um, uh, different uh, hoops. UK, uh, apart from leaving European Union, in the same 
uh, time introduced new immigration system, not just for uh, EU citizens, but for everyone. So you can have now a, a point-based uh, uh, system and uh, special regulation for academics, which are academics, artists, and musicians are in the same category who can apply for short-term uh, uh, short visas. Uh, uh, but it feels from UK perspective that so much change, but uh, I'm interested to hear what's from European perspective. Are you just going to kind of ignore UK because it's too complicated now and uh, plan um, collaborations without or is, is UK still <laughs> on your mind? If, if, if I may answer this question, um, um, yes, of course not. <laughs> and uh, of course, you, uh, Europe uh, is much larger than European Union. Uh, and as I was saying, uh, ENCC, just to give you a, a, a short uh, um, uh, vision, it's, it's a network established in 1994 in Brussels, and it uh, unites the regional, local, and national networks all over Europe. And we are representing 5,000 cultural organizations uh, in, in, in many European countries, uh, including UK, of course. Uh, and uh, we also have a working group uh, dedicated to territorial development that I'm very pleased to be a coordinator of. And we have five members in, in the UK. Uh, what our fears are, and, and we are highly concerned also about the um, Creative Europe program. We are supported as a network by the European Commission from Creative Europe program. And uh, recently there was this uh, information that the UK didn't uh, apply to, to remain in, in the Creative Europe scheme, which means automatically that uh, the project schemes that started in 2014-2020 in um, um, horizon, they can be finalized without the, the change and the eligibility of costs of, of bilateral cooperation with UK and, 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 uh, and EU can, can stay with, without any change. But after that period, there will not be an eligibility. I also read that the uh, UK desk, uh, the U Euro desk of UK will uh, finish, will, will close on the 31st of March, 2021 which also means that we um, will be facing a, a very different uh, situation. Uh, and we believe that we should think about completely a, a new solidarity, something with, which was what, what was obvious needs to be redefined. We of course share the same values, but we still, but we cannot, we, we do not share the same legislation anymore. And um, we believe that um, some kind of a different fund, different uh, structure, different funding scheme should be established in order to, to, to keep those very important collaborations ongoing uh, and, and not to, 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 to waste all those years that we have been creating something very, very strong. Hopefully, hopefully something something will happen. Um, I, I think uh, pandemic and COVID uh, doesn't help the situation because obviously uh, the main focus now is on uh, dealing with the pandemic. So we might wait a little bit longer for, for solutions. Um, uh, at Centrala, we run uh, art gallery here. We, we also have music program, live music program. So our worries include uh, uh, small things like visas, transport, which actually is on hold at the moment, queues on the border, um, costs of the travel. Uh, so it's quite uh, quite a lot of very pragmatic uh, things and, uh, and uh, obviously wider whether people will wanna uh, uh, collaborate um, uh, with the countries with, uh, with such a difficulty, so people will be choosing partners on uh, some, somewhere nearer. So I'm wondering uh, what's uh, about your perspective, um, Simina, we're sharing probably some similar fears. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm sure um, the, the fears that you've already mentioned are, uh, are shared and it's, it's really good to hear already this, these kind of um, structural changes that are happening. Um, but I'm also thinking of what this moment of uh, Brexit it, um, and the pandemic is um, is bringing up, and uh, I really appreciate your point, uh, Piotr, about um, redefining solidarity um, and thinking. You know, even thinking about this uh, this term of um, international cooperation that we uh, we we you know. Um, uh, 
appreciate or or uh, let's say we encourage perhaps in in our practice but um i'm also thinking about um and i guess at Ineva uh, and through the work that we do um we're thinking a lot also about um histories histories of struggle um and documenting those histories and um keeping them present, keeping them alive in the moment. Because what we're encountering now with Brexit, uh, with this kind of intensifying of a, of a border regime, right, and, and kind of a, a changing structure, um, this is no new uh, situation. Um, so I think it's also taking notes from, uh, from previous struggles. Um, and personally, um, I mean, obviously, uh, as a as an East, as a person of Eastern European heritage living in the UK, pre and post Brexit, um, I've been thinking about Brexit a lot. But uh, really, I've been taking notes from uh, my colleagues working in the migrant rights sector, um, from organizations such as the Eastern European Resource Center uh, or the Roma Support Group, um, working on the front line with, um, with the problems that Eastern European communities are facing. Um, so it's it's of course we're talking about culture and uh, whether it's art or that's academia, um, but I think what this moment brings is not having the luxury to uh, disentangle these kind of um, daily problems uh, that we're facing from this kind of larger, uh, from, you know, culture. So, you know, the, the, the point is um, just, just keeping in touch with the, 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 the problems that our communities are facing, uh, listening to them and and in, in collaboration and in collaboration with our colleagues, um, not only in, in the EU, but um, outside of the EU as well, um, trying to find new ways of, of uh, cooperating in, in, this, in this way. Um, so it's, it's, it's paying attention to, to these histories. These are not new moments. <laughs> these are not necessarily un unprecedented times, I think. Uh, well, exactly, very good point. Uh, uh, we just need to change the way of thinking um, um, of luxury of having uh, you know, free travel uh, things. Uh, but most of the EU obviously stay, uh, stay the same. It's, uh, it's quite a culturally uh, large uh, country will stay, stay out, but maybe it will help uh, to appreciate building relationship with um, uh, countries outside of the U European Union. Maybe this is something uh, uh, which is going to be something new for the UK. Uh, uh, maybe we'll start working outside of the uh, EU more rather than just focus on, on the EU. Uh, it's then into something uh, into something positive, and uh, um, I think uh, in terms of travel and transport, uh, because of COVID, we we still really don't know how in practical terms we work because we don't travel anyway. Uh, but uh, what are your predictions? Do you think that uh, difficult travel will affect uh, building partnership and collaborations networks? Um, or travel itself is not such a big factor. I feel like right now travel is not a big factor for those who have the luxury to work from home, who do not have to travel for work. Um, and sort of uh, leading up to this live discussion, we had our brief warm up session where we were talking about how this meeting live on Zoom and streamed on Facebook would not have happened in pre-pandemic times that probably Alicia would be trying to get funding to fly mm -hmm. us to uh, to Birmingham, you know, and would go out for dinner to a local pub and, you know, and have fun and it would have been great. It's still nice to see you and to meet you even if only virtually, but um, there are definitely already so much has changed in terms of um, reduced travel expectations related to collaborations and also giving guest talks or even guest performances, right? Um, it's, 
born out of necessity, but so it's, I wouldn't dare to make any predictions how much of it is actually going to stay after the pandemic. Uh, but the precedent is there, right? The precedent is there. And of course, with concerns about the, the global um, environmental crisis, uh, it in many ways is a good development that we're traveling less, right? So I, I feel like right now, like I would be very hesitant to making predictions like how Brexit is going to matter in terms of travel after the pandemic because the pandemic has already changed so much. It's, it's almost like pandemic is uh, helping us to adjust to Brexit. Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's true. Um, definitely before the pandemic, there was many European initiatives aiming to improve mobility, even um, uh, Creative Europe uh, had a strong emphasis on, on uh, improving mobility, but um, uh, but I think also uh, in the same time improving uh, maybe some equality where um, uh, extra funding is dedicated to um, improve mobility for uh, maybe poorer countries or uh, smaller organization. What about rural areas, Piotr? I know that you uh, you are responsible for rural areas in um, culture center network. Uh, do you think there will be any changes there? It's, 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 it's difficult to predict, uh, actually, because uh, I, I would like to, to um, answer also referring to your previous question about uh, the, the traveling. And, and I believe that for us, for, 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 for cultural managers, also for, um, for speakers, for uh, representatives of, of, of some uh, other cultural operators or artists in some point, at some point, it, it's 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 completely eco-friendly. It's sustainable that we stay home uh, and uh, even more efficient in, in many ways that we speak. But for culture and for arts, it 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 is harmful um, very much. And uh, and our um, um, understanding of culture, which 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 equals also to togetherness uh, versus loneliness versus uh, isolation. Uh, I think that those factors are, are completely to be rebuilt uh, after the, the lockdown, and and also the the this this uh, the fierce lockdown is is is, is changing so much um, the situation in the countries uh, for artists especially, and in, in in Poland or in many countries where there are freelancers also in rural areas or urban areas, this this it's not playing so much the role. Um, they have a very very difficult times if they are not related to any organization which which could be supporting them uh, on the legal basis or getting extra external funds etc uh, some of them the the the, the complete freelancers they so in some cases they don't have any uh, even fund to 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 apply to um so um i, I really believe that um and also the, um, the information about this uh, um, uh, touring artists between eu and, and and uk there's no deal for for visa was 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 quite a harsh information to to to, to hear and also so many artists were saying look we we will be just uh, leaving the lockdown and we would like so much to, to continue our our proceedings as we used to and and now we have those those another obstacles so i believe i mean this new solidarity and this 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 rethinking is is completely important because the, in in some cases we might say the the, the pandemic is helping us in um, for digitalization for for, for for those elements but but for for culture and for um really creating um uh the space between the artists and and the audience it's it's completely harmful so what i want to say in the end of of, of this long long sentence is that uh after the pandemic uh, we we should be completely closer to each other and this uh goes uh, as as a as a hint as a as advice to to brexit situation we should not be apart we should not be building a wall uh on, on the on the channel it's just completely simply impossible and uh we should be staying together <laughs> yes uh, thank thank you for this it's it's so important uh uh, UK uh, has this uh, um, additional difficulty being an island, uh, so uh, there is no such a free flow of 
of travel anyway, but now now it feels like there is a wall between uh, between UK and um, and Europe, and uh, as much maybe um, uh, Europe will carry on uh, uh, doing what what and uh, um, continue what, whatever is happening in Europe. But my fear is uh, what will happen with the UK because it's almost with the visas difficulties, uh, cost of travel. Uh, we might be receiving much less of the culture and European influence uh, and uh, European dialogue. I don't know um, if you would agree, um, Simina, um, how does it feel for you? Because uh, obviously being um, uh, European citizens, EU citizens, I always uh, uh, have this craving for more Europe in the UK and now um, I, I worry that it's going to be even less. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think you know we can talk on uh, on several levels here. We can talk on the level of uh, structures and funding, um, but at at the at the same time, um, the UK is so much shaped by the diasporas and the immigrant communities uh, that have built this country. Um, that it's it's really difficult to imagine um, a severing of that connection. Um, there's there will be, and it's this is what we're we're experiencing a severing of funding structures, of severing of um, of certain um, ease of of travel, of movement, but there is an impossibility to to sever that because it's so so much entangled not just with europe with with the rest of the world as well um so perhaps there is because there will be i imagine a need uh, or or there will be a kind of a response to this severing um that need to connect will be um will be even stronger and uh and this moment you know with like like we are we are here now or like agatha was saying um these these new ways of of um having dialogues uh will be even more necessary we'll find new ways of of doing that um just being yes or or yeah as piotr was saying being um being together, new forms of togetherness. I think there will be, um, you know, thinking about how contemporary art uh, has functioned in the last 10, 20 years with its, um, you know, reliance on the biennial model, uh, with its reliance on um, international residencies. I think those models will see quite significant changes. Um, biennials <laughs> and that kind of structure that was already quite criticized and has, you know, in, from so many points of view in terms of sustainability, in terms of its impact on, on the environment, in terms of um, kind of speed of, of consumption of cultural product, um, those models will be questioned more and more. Um, so I think we will see a, a kind of shift in shift in that. Uh, also, the, the residency model will probably change quite a lot. I, 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 I wonder, I think it will still happen, but we will see slightly, slightly different um, ways of doing that. So I can see some, some, some impact but there are some areas where, you know, in the field of, um, I mean, for Innova, um, we've been continuing to do our public pro programs throughout the, um, the pandemic. We've switched to a, like this, to a digital uh, program. And we've seen, um, we've actually managed to reach wider audiences that couldn't attend our events before. You know, we have people from, yeah, not just from Europe, suddenly being able to attend something that was impossible before, or of course it was possible, but, you know, booking a flight to go from Toronto to London to just, 
sit there for two hours, it's quite rare <laughs> and probably not that eco-friendly. So it's, it's great that we have other opportunities. Um, so yeah, I think there will be changes, but it's quite early. We can we can speculate, and I think speculating is. No, is the question important. is um, uh, what Agatha mentioned: whether this the culture of doing things uh, online will um, will sustain, or maybe uh, we'll have a scenario where um, after a pandemic, if or when the pandemic will end, uh, uh, maybe the world will return to more face-to-face -face, uh, activities and. Uh, um uh, the europe might be uh, able to do it easier and and the uk will have to continue with uh, maybe online uh, with um losing out on certain opportunities because actually res residence is quite important one because mm -hmm. having to apply for visa to uh, to attend residency is, is a massive cost and massive effort and uh, sometimes artists live or researchers musicians very precarious lives uh, and those extra costs and administration. And uh, I'm thinking about um, cultural exchanges and collaboration, which is very often in the UK done uh, through smaller organization, because I, I can't imagine that large cultural institution will have funds and uh, administration um, uh, able to help, but the smaller organization um, like us uh, uh, and uh, on, on various networks, um, it will be a huge cost just to deal with the visas and, 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 and all the legal requirements and uh, and finding out really what uh, uh, what we need to do from from uh, the legal point of view we're losing all this uh, uh, European law on um, uh, on um, on contracting and uh, and so on so it's, it's it's quite a lot so it's uh, uh, um, uh, there might be a different Difference, uh, difference between the largest maybe organization and network and, and small organization like us. Hopefully there will be more structural and policy solutions um, uh, and, and, and support for us. Um, uh, I don't know, Piotr, are there any plans? Maybe last question uh, from uh, maybe large net European networks perspective um, to release additional support now to deal with uh, more complicated processes. Uh, yes, uh, we um, we are starting initiating just now with the deadline of 10th of February um, our first cascading grant scheme, uh, which is called Up Grants, mm -hmm. and we are encouraging all the ENCC members and members of their members to to apply for a grant of three thousand euro max, and we have five uh, uh, grants uh, of, of three thousand euro uh, dedicated to um, to projects um, related to cultural development, sustainability, et cetera. It's, it's, it's on our website. And, and also this was uh, one of the ideas uh, not really implemented in, in the last years that the European networks should be building also this solidarity with, with those um, um, also uh, individuals and, 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 and or smaller organizations which are really much more far from Brussels. And, for them to be receiving funds and to be applying, and sometimes it's very, very difficult. So this micro-grant scheme, the cascading grant scheme, it's a pilot um, initiative. If it will be successful, we'll be trying um, to, to organize more and more calls. And I, I know that other European networks with, with uh, which we are in a close cooperation are also planning such, such schemes. So uh, we believe that this will bridge the gap also um, uh, between the, the, the larger uh, financial um, schemes and, and, and those who, who are really striving for, for, for funds for, for um, some activities. So um, um, it, everything is on, on our website, ncc.eu. And um, I, I believe that this is one, one of, of, of the important uh, seeds to grow um, as an idea. Agatha, can I just ask if there is anything similar happening for the researchers, or do you think uh, they could be or should be as uh, some kind of uh, well, lines? as I mentioned, there's there's definitely this this funding line that I mentioned, which is a collaboration between AHRC and the in this case the German uh, Research Council. Uh, but I really think the most important change, and I agree with Semina that. People will be finding like new models that some models are outdated and you know need to be reinvented or just completely you know abolished and something new has to come in place but this comes from a position of precarity 
So it's really just like carving your space and like surviving. And, and I think in order for cultural and educational and research institutions to thrive, the state needs to step in and the state needs to help, right? Which obviously right now it's like a very idealistic uh, ask to have of the current UK government, but with the withdrawal of all the EU funding that obviously a lot of um, UK based researchers we're also profiting from because you know research is in the neoliberal academia mostly funded by third party funding so with this with this funding being absent there's just going to be more struggle and even more precarity so i i find the picture very bleak <laughs> unless there is an important you know a very meaningful structural change Thank you. Thank you, Agata. Uh, thank you, Piotr, Piotr and Simina. We, uh, we came to the end of our discussion. Uh, it was a brief uh, 30 minutes. Thank you uh, for everyone who joined us on Facebook on YouTube, or YouTube. Uh, I hope it was uh, helpful uh, to share those perspectives. And please join us in two weeks time for next discussion with the new, new guests and new topics. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.